Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to today's Kendo Rant. Uh, let's get right into the questions. How can I make my full return into Kendall? I fully recovered from a concussion in June 2018 and I find myself losing confidence during some practices uh, to the point of not bringing my Borgo because I'm af afraid of either getting severely dinged in the head again or I'm just severely uncomfortable. Uh, in the end, I stopped showing up. Uh, but I really want to continue with Kendo since I love it so much. However, these negative attitudes don't exist when it comes to Hockey or Naginata. Uh, I'm comfortable being Motorachi, having Keiko, uh, taking high speed hits, uh, taking checks when necessary, um, etc. I ditched the old men and I, I, had for, uh, I had for a very protective men and now I use it for both Kendo and Naginata. I understand these are probably mental obstacles, but what are your thoughts on this? Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Uh, sorry, I, I didn't do a great job of reading that out, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, in, in answer to this, um, so from what I can understand from this, you've uh, you've been hit very hard in the past. Um, you did give me a bit more background information. I've just actually lifted the uh, the question part out. Um, this was actually sent to me uh, privately because uh, they want to sort of rem the, the person wants to remain anonymous, so that's fair enough. Um, but yeah, you gave me a lot of background info as well. So obviously, you've been hit. Um, you know, uh, what, what, from what I can gather, whilst you were still quite new to wearing the Kendall Borger, um, and it's, it's obviously caused you a, a sort of injury, like a concussion, um, which is very rare actually in Kendall in my experience. But anyway, um, so I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that's happened. Uh, and now obviously you've recovered from that, but you're, you're having, uh, trouble getting over that sort of mental barrier to go back, obviously for fear of, fear of it happening again or something similar happening again, um, or experiencing that sort of thing. Um, and how, how can you get past it? Well, um, it's a very tough one, obviously. It's a very difficult one um, because, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not a sort of uh, medical person, so I can't really give you advice about that sort of thing. Um, I understand as well from reading the background info that the person that, that caused the injury isn't really going to practice anymore. I don't know. But um, I think the best thing you can do, to be honest, is I, I definitely would encourage you to go back to Kendall. Uh, definitely go back. And I think you need to just have a, a, a conversation with your teacher, your sensei, um, and ask them about this. Tell them what you've told me um, and, and say, look, I really want to come back to Kendall, but um, I'm really worried about this. So um, is it possible for me so to sort of take it step by step? Um, perhaps not wear the bug straight away or just for a little bit um, and ha really try and get them on board to support you. I'm sure they will. I'm absolutely sure they will. Um, and let you uh, come back into Kendall um, at your own sort of pace um, with, what, with what you feel comfortable with. Um, there's not a lot else I can sort of say about it otherwise. I do think that you're probably right that it's, it's largely mental obstacles that are causing this. So if you can get in there, um, get back into the dojo, speak to your sensei and see what they can do to help you feel more comfortable about uh, attending Kendall practice. Because, uh, yeah, I definitely I def definitely love it if you could get back into practice. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely, I think that's the best way to go. Okay, next one. A pair of questions uh, for Kendo Ran, if I may. Uh, what is your favorite style of mune kazari on the door? Uh, two, is there any prejudice, uh, prejudices, positive or negative, against fancy mune kazari? Uh, what would be appropriate styles of mune kazari for grading? Okay, <laughs> great question. Um, okay, so the mune kazari is, um, this is the mune on the door. Okay, this is a door, obviously. Uh, <laughs> this is the door dai. Yeah, this is the bit you get hit on. And this is the mune. Okay, the mune. Mune literally means like chest uh, in Japanese. Um, it, it can mean a couple of other things as well. <laughs> I'm sure those that understand Japanese know what I'm talking about. But um, in this case, it means the part that protects your, your breast area. Okay. Um, so, uh, the mune kazari is the decoration on this part of the door. Yeah. So this is called the onigumo kazari. Okay. Onigumo. This style here, you see these sort of ropes that go on it. Can you see that? That, this part here and here and that. They're the, uh, that's, that's the kazari on this one. This is called the onigumo. Okay. It means, uh, demon clouds or devil clouds. Yeah, I don't know why it's called that. It's just a really traditional one that's always been called that. I'm sure there's a reason. 
Um, this is this is another door of mine, and this answers your next question about. Um, well, this answers your question about my favorite style. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite style. Um, this one is in, on our website. We call it Chor Kazali. Obviously, it's shaped like a butterfly, um, and I, I just I just kind of like it. I think it's kind of cool. Um, and then in the back over there as well. See if I can reach it. If I can reach it here. Uh, this is another one um, of mine. Uh, this is a kind of a unique one. It doesn't actually have a specific name because uh, it's a bit of a, a, a special order um, that I had made for me um, when just before I left Japan, actually. Um, so yeah, it's you know it's it, it's a kind of um, nice decoration that I quite like. Basically, uh, in terms of my favorite styles, I I personally like ones that are quite simple but not overly simple. I've got a couple that are totally plain. Uh, what we call saws as you so it's where um you've got these lines here i'm not sure if you can see but you've got these lines here and then from um sort of there upwards it's just totally plain just with the dot stitching um there's none of this sort of rope design at all i've got one like that i've got all different ones um i've got too many really <laughs> uh, but if i if i had to pick one if i had to pick one specific favorite it's gonna be this one yeah, is that in the shot? Is that in the shot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's this one. This is my favorite one. Okay. Um, in terms of your next question, um, I hope I've not dropped out of focus there. Have I? Can you see me? <laughs> um, it, I'm trying to put my phone down. That's what I'm monitoring the video on. The next one, um, the next question is, is there any prejudice, uh, prejudices, positive or negative, against fancy mune kazari? Um, and what would be the appropriate style for grading? Um, to my knowledge and in my experience, no, there's n I've never heard or seen of any sort of prejudice at all about the, what kind of mune kazari you have. Um, it would be totally ridiculous if that existed. Um, obviously within reason. I mean, if you've got something like, I mean, like if, if you kind of, I mean, my imagine, imagination sort of ran away with me a bit and thought, well, maybe if you had something offensive on there, like, I mean, I've seen people with words stitched on it and if you had like a swear word or something on it, then yeah, that's not appropriate, of course. But, um, you know, I don't, I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I've seen all sorts of different ones. I've even seen one where this rope and was made into the shape of a tiger's face, uh, which sounds really weird, but it actually looked kind of good. Um, so, yeah, and uh, I think the guy... Uh, the guy was wearing it. Um, I think he wore it in his Nanadana grading or something. His Nan Nanadana grading, and uh, he definitely wore it in the Kyoto Tai Guy. Um, so yeah, uh, there there isn't, as far as I know, any positive or negative against the fancy mune kazari. Um, and uh, this part here, the stitching, the sort of dot stitching here. Um, this is called the shokko, yeah. And the, the, these days, these are the most common ones, these sort of plain navy stitches. But you can have more sort of colourful ones, different coloured dots, or even different sort of embroidered patterns. Uh, that tends to be a little bit more old-fashioned, more modern. Borga tends to have this kind of plain um, look. That tends to be the most uh, sort of preferred look these days. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's nothing to stop you um, having that. And same for your grading. You, you definitely shouldn't be judged... Uh, at a grading for the the design of your borgu. Um It should be in a good state of repair, you know? It shouldn't be like totally um, sort of run down. Um, it, it should be in a good state of repair, um, but it doesn't have to be a specific design. <laughs> um, and I think it would be unfair to uh, to suggest that. Um, I've worn, uh, I've worn all three of these in different done gradings actually, all three of them. Uh, and I know none of them are particularly fancy, to be honest. I mean, you know, that one's a little bit fancy and the one at the back is a little bit unique. Uh, but I, I wore that one for my sixth dan. I wore this one for my fifth dan. I wore this one for my fourth dan. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think there should be uh, any sort of prejudice against it. And I don't think that it should affect uh, the results of your gradings either. So yeah. <laughs> uh, next, uh, it seems like there's a much, now this is a great question. Now this question comes from um, the Kendo Show Early Access Group 
and there's a link in the description. I say this every video, so if it, you're only gonna listen to this if this is the first time you're watching this video, but if this is the first time you're watching the video, there's a link in the description for the Kendo Show Early Access group. It's a free group on Facebook where you can post questions that I answer in these videos. But what's really great about it is, obviously you can post them in the comments down below on YouTube or wherever else you're watching this. Um, but if you go into the Kendo Show Early Access group, the great thing about that is it's not just me in there. There's, there's a whole community of Kendoka from all around the world of all different levels, and they all chime in as well. Um, so you get a bit of a discussion going. It's, it's really, really quite interesting. Um, so yeah, the link's in the description. Uh, so this, this question comes from there, and uh, it's a really great question, and I'm going to answer it, and then I'm going to go on to rant a little bit my own sort of uh, freestyle a bit, because... Um, it kind of brings me on to something that's been bugging me for a while. So, um, right, let's get to the question. It seems like uh, there's much more limited selection of Shinai for women than there are for men. I know the demographics are not exactly in our favour, uh, but it's a bit of a letdown when us ladies have quartered the number of Shinai, uh, sorry, the number of choices that the guys do. Any thoughts as to why this is? Bonus geek question. <laughs> your mission should you sh choose to accept it. Daisy Ridley walks into your door door and says, I have four months to learn Kendall for my big episode nine showdown with Adam Driver. Uh, what do you do? Anything different from other beginners? <laughs> right. <laughs> so two brilliant questions. <laughs> really, really like them. Thank you. Um, so first off, about the selection of Shinai for women. Um, you're absolutely right. The, pro the problem is, is that it, it, it's a demographic problem in that there's not as many women doing kendo as there are men. Um, and that isn't... Um, and the, the, the hardest thing, the hardest thing about Shinai is from a manufacturer's point of view, <clears throat> obviously I operate kendostar.com and I know what it's like as a manufacturer to try and um, deal with stocking Shinai. And it's, it's, a, it's a problem that I'm very much aware of, and it's something that I'm looking to tackle over the next six months. Uh, so it's def definitely watch this space, because I am looking on trying to expand. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know if expand is the right word, but I'm looking to um, make the lineup of Shinai, both for men and for women, much more uh, user-friendly. Um, so the problem we've got is that when you manufacture Shinai, um, to your own specification. If you want to make, uh, as a manufacturer, if you want to release your own brand of Shinai, then <clears throat> you don't, you can't go to a, a Shinai manufacturers and uh, just ask them to make you 20 or 30 or 50 or even 100. You have to purchase them in the, the number of thousands. Um, and most of the large Shinai producers in Japan um, obviously are working to please the Japanese market. Now, the thing is, is that there's far more adult men practicing uh, kendo in Japan than there is adult women. So those big uh, Shinai manufacturers that are really um, dominating the market with Shinai production um, manufacture much more Shinai to suit men than they do for women. Uh, one of the reasons, the main re not I don't know if it's the main reason, but one of the big reasons, as I just said, is because there's more men. The second reason is, is that in Japan, not very many women um, uh, take that much, uh, how can I say, what's the right word? Uh, I've got the Japanese in front of my mind, I can't think of the, the English. Um, the, they don't, like... They don't care so much about what kind of Shinai they use. They just want to use the cheapest one. Um, lots of them still use like a, a high school age Shinai if they don't compete because, or even if they only compete at local level because they don't have Shinai checks at most tournaments, um, which is going to lead into my, like, my, lant, right, my rant a bit later. But uh, <laughs> um, So the thing is, is, yeah, except the very elite, very uh, sort of very com competition focused women, to be honest, they they only really want, you know, um, they either want the cheapest Shinai or they want the lightest Shinai. Uh, and occasionally they want one that's oval grip, but they, they don't, most of them don't want to pay more for an oval grip. Okay. That's just a fact. That's just what the market's like. All right. That's just what um, most women in Japan doing kendo are like. Men, on the other hand, are a little bit different. Um, in, this is, I'm talking about in the Japanese market still, all right? Uh, but the men in the Japanese market are very different. They like to sort of spend their disposable income on, on kendo stuff. Um, 
on like, uh, yeah, on, on different shinai. Uh, oh, I'll try out a new shinai. Oh, okay, now I'll try a new shinai. Um, and, and as I said, because there's so many more of them than there are women practicing kendo, then it's easier for the shinai manufacturers to cater to that kind of um, demand um, than it is for them to do that for women because there just isn't a demand there. I mean, if we take an example like a kotogata shinai, kotogata shinai that's like a, <clears throat> like a, an evenly balanced shinai, not a door body that feels like one that's got the weight nearer the tip. So it's um, it, it delivers solid, more solid strikes, but it's got a little bit more weight to it when you swing it. That's quite popular with like high graded um, male senses uh, in Japan. But most women don't want that kind of shinai. They, they just want a lighter shinai. Um, in Japan, this is again, I'm, I'm being very clear that this is my experience of working in this industry in Japan. Uh, <laughs> um, they, they don't want that. They want a, sh a shinai that, that, that feels lighter and that they can swing quicker. Um, especially as they don't, they, they tend to, especially the, the, very, the even the, the higher level people. And I, 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 I'm on court sort of reasonably close terms with a few, uh, female sensei that likes, you know, seventh dan. Um, and even though they prefer to use the kind of faster shinai or the lighter shinai, just because of the type of kendo that they do, that tends to be a little bit more technical. Um, so there's that as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's the reason, uh, as to why that is, as I said, I am doing my best though, to try and address that going forward. Um, at least for the international market, um, because, yeah, uh, I'd like I'd like Kendall Star to be able to be a good kind of, you know, market leader really for for that sort of thing. So the the Shinai line up on Kendall Star is something that I'm I'm actually focusing on right now. Um, I think we've got a great uh, Shinai lineup, but I would like to have a better. Um, sort of selection, particularly for women. Uh, so thank you for bringing that up. Uh, and I hope that answers that, that question. Uh, about your bonus question about um, Daisy Ridley walks into the door and says, I have four months to learn Kendall uh, for my episode nine show showdown with Adam Driver. What do I do? And anything different from other beginners? Well, what do I do? Um, I, I, I say, well, uh, first, you, <laughs> you're you going to need a shinai, so uh, go to kendostar.com. <laughs> uh, no, that's a joke. Uh, of course, I'd, um, I mean, assuming that this would be for the, you know, they'd, they'd have the budget to work for this with their, um, for the film, then, yeah, I mean, in four months. I mean, if I'm honest, I'd, I'd probably have to say to her, like, are you sure you're in the right place? Because <laughs> I don't think that Kendo's gonna gonna really do much for her, her sort of lightsaber dueling abilities. Um, I don't. I, I certainly don't think it's gonna be such an ent entertaining duel if she just if she does four months of Kendo. Um, but you know, if they're if they're adamant that they want they want Ke want her to to become as proficient at kendo as she possibly can within that four months then yeah i'd probably say well okay we're gonna need we're gonna need uh five days a week um for maybe five four to five hours um and other than that yeah i probably i i don't think i would do much different from other beginners um except i obviously if you've only got four months to get her from zero to say let's say shodan level <laughs> um then yeah, that that's what it's going to need. It's going to need that sort of cram uh, tactic, really. Um, but as I say, I think the, the first question would be, I think you might be in the wrong place because <laughs> uh, I'm not sure Kendo is going to do much for um, that kind of lightsaber showdown. Um, though, having said that, Daisy, if you're watching, you know, you I'm in Manchester. Uh, you, you're welcome to come and uh, try out Kendo. Uh, and same goes to you, Adam Driver, if, uh, if you, if you want to get one over, um, on, on the Jedi. So <laughs> anyway, um, with that being said, uh, that's the end of the questions for today. Uh, but I do want to kind of have a little bit of a run. Let me just see how long I've been going at this. Um, it's sort of connected to the, the question about, uh, women's Shinai, cause it is about women's Shinai. Um, I want to talk about, uh, the size of women's Shinai actually, um, or more specifically the length. Um, I've got a couple of Shinai here and these are, um, these are basically, uh, two of our best selling models, um, from, uh, the Kendo Star range. This is the uh, Kendo Star um, all-purpose uh, Shinai. 
And uh, this is the ladies 39 model, and this is the ladies 38. Um, and obviously the men's 39 is available. That's our best selling Shinai overall. Um, and they are on sale at the moment at kendostar.com, uh, just saying. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, <clears throat> the reason I want to bring it up is because um, it, it, it's this one, actually, that I've got a bit of a problem with, the ladies 38. Um, now, it's, it, I'm not quite sure how I want to attack this, but um, I think that this Shinai, or this size, uh, I think it will be better if it, if it didn't really exist. I don't think it's super necessary. And I've, I've toyed with the idea of removing it um, completely from our product line, but because there's, there's still a demand for it, um, which I think is, is um, there's an unnecessary demand for it, in my opinion, um, I, I still have it on there, but I, I'd really like to do away with it. And <laughs> um, the reason for that is because, let, let, me, let, me, let me move to the rule book, all right? Let me move to the rule book. Now, <clears throat> uh, this, is, this, this is the rule book here. It's got the specifications of the, uh, the Shinai here for tournament use, okay? And it says quite clearly at the top that the, um, the, the um, specifications for a Shinai for Ito, so with, with one Shinai, not for Nito, um, for the uh, female, uh, it should be um, more than 440 grams, and it must be less than 120 centimeters. And uh, male, it says it should be more than 510 grams, and it must be less than 120 centimeters. So you'll notice there that although the weights are different, actually the length, 120 centimeters, is exactly the same, okay? So for adults, whether you're male or female, it's 120 centimeters. Now, a, uh, I'm gonna leave that there for a minute. Now. The, thir the 38 and the 39, what all that means, and if, you, if, if you've got experience in Kendo or you've bought Shinai before, you'll probably know that you can see all these different sizes for Shinai. You've got, they start usually at around tw size 28 for little kids, um, and then it usually goes up in, in units of two. <coughs> so normally you'll see like a size 39 or a size 38, um, or small uh, sort of um, smaller sizes, which would be suitable for juniors, like 37, uh, which is obviously an odd number. Um, 36, uh, then it goes down to 34, and then um, 32, 30, 28. And what that actually refers to, now in, in Japanese, in, it, they're not actually called 39 or 38. Um, it's actually like 3.9 uh, 3 or 3.8, um, or they, they actually say uh, sanku or sabuku, uh, or sanpachi or sabuhachi, um, which means like a, a three uh, and uh, three and nine or three and eight. Uh, and that's because that refers to the length. Okay, it refers to the length and it refers to it in the old Japanese system um, of shaku. So it's three shaku and nine sun is, a, is a, what we call a 39. Uh, and that equates to 120 centimeters, basically. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and the 38 would be three shaku and eight sun, um, <coughs> which is basically three centimeters, which is one sun, um, shorter. Um, I'm not sure if you'll get this in the shot here, but if I put these two down, you can see that there's like a three centimeter difference between the length. Now, here's the bit that I don't quite understand, <clears throat> is, is why that the, the ladies 38 is so popular. Um, in Japan, it's not so popular, okay? It's not so popular. Um, so it's quite difficult for me to, um, it's not difficult for me to get hold of them, but I have to kind of, sometimes I have to special order them because uh, the, the manufacturers in Japan, they don't really produce that many of them because Japanese market doesn't really use them. Either um, adult women use the regular 38 ladies, which is different to this one, uh, and I'll go into that in a minute, or they use the 13, 39 ladies. And um, the reason I say the regular 38 ladies, that's basically, there's actually two kinds of 38 women's shinai uh, that are manufactured. And that's because if we go back to these rules, if we go down a block from here, this is the adults rules here. If we go down to the left here, it talks about high school, high school students. Okay, so people who are 15 to 18 years old. Um, 
And their uh, regulations say for females, it must be more than 420. And for males, 480. And the length is 117 or less. That is the same as a 3.8 or a 38 size shinai. So uh, what you find is there's actually three, there's actually three kinds of, of 38 shinais. There's one for high school boys. There's one for high school girls, which lay, weighs less than, uh, sorry, weighs more than 420 grams. And then there's what's called the, um, the 38 for adult women, okay? Um, or in Japanese, they call it ippan joshi. And that one obviously has to weigh more than 440 grams. Now, uh, what <laughs> the thing is, is that what a lot of people in Japan do, if they're not so super serious about uh, kendo, many, many women often just carry on using the high school age shinai and they, they would use a, a 38 that's actually intended for the high school girl. Because again, they don't actually have the shinai checks in Japan, uh, except at the most sort of senior level tournaments. Um, so uh, what you then find is that competitive university students or um, very high level uh, competitors tend to, and I'm not saying everybody because there, there are certainly some women out there who do use the 38 adult ladies, but the majority of them use the 39 uh, ladies. And that's because whether you take the 38 adult ladies or you take the 39 ladies or women's, um, I think that's the language, the, the, the verbiage we use on the website, the 38 adult women's or the 39 women's, the weight of them is the same. The weight is the same. The only difference is the length. Okay. It's not that if you get the women's 39, it's a heavier shinai. It's not. It's the same weight. They're, they're, they're made to be the same weight. Um, what you're just, you're just getting a shinai that's three centimeters shorter, um, which frankly uh, has no real practical advantage. Uh, in, in fact, quite the opposite. It's had, it has a, a practical disadvantage. Um, personally, um, and as always, this is my personal opinion. Um, I've, 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 I've spent a month or so uh, practicing with a, uh, a shorter shinai uh, to see, because to, I, I, I've wondered about this for a while. So I wanted to see if, if I could find an advantage for practicing with a shorter shinai. Now, I'm, one of the things I often get told is, oh, well, I, I'm, I'm quite a short lady, so I'd like to, I'd like to have a shorter shinai. But I'm quite a short man, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I'm not super tall, um, unfortunately. Um, I, I'm usually doing kendo with people, especially in the West. In Japan, I'm not. I'm Japan, I'm sort of average height. But in, in the West, I'm like... A, I'm usually doing kendo with people that are, are taller than me. Yes, I'm, I'm only about 173 centimeters tall. So um, for, for a male, I'm, I'm, I'm not on the tall side, okay? <laughs> um, also, I particularly like waza like nukido, okay? And I particularly like hikiwaza, all right? Uh, so I'm not, I, I, I'm sort of a person that does the kind of kendo that could potentially benefit from a shorter shinai if if I wasn't very good at and sort of anticipating or judging my own my own distance um but yeah I mean I don't see that in fact there's definitely a, an advantage to having a slightly longer shinai now I know it's only three centimeters but it, it's better to have that in addition rather than to have it taken away um so I guess I guess the point of my rant is, is if you're a woman out there doing kendo and you're using a 38 ladies shinai, um, I think you should try a 39. <laughs> uh, I think next time you should try a, a ladies 39. There, there's no positive advantage uh, in my book, in my opinion, for you to use a ladies 38. Now, I appreciate that's quite a, a controversial thing to say, potentially, um, especially if it's what you're used to, right? But just because you're used to it ain't a good reason to carry on doing it, Um either, to be honest. Um, I've got quite a few friends, as I mentioned before. Um, I, I, I have a few people that are in my sort of group of friends that I, I, I wouldn't say group of friends, I don't hang around with them, but people that I know on a personal level um, over in Japan who are very high level uh, female practitioners, um, you know, uh, sixth and seventh and level. Uh, I, I know a couple of people that are 
previous Japanese national team, even current Jap uh, Japanese national team, actually, uh, thinking about it. Um, all Japan champions or very high uh, achievers. And I can't think of any of them that use a ladies adult 38. And some of them are very small uh, in, in comparison to the people that they're com competing with. Um, but I uh, to my knowledge, um, I'm pretty sure all of them are using a, a, a size 39. Uh, now, obviously, I could be wrong. I'm sure there are some people uh, because they are manufactured at the end of the day. Uh, but we've got this thing sort of ingrained in us in the West that a man uses a 39 and a woman uses a 38. And I really think we should get away from that because I really think that um, a lot of women um, will benefit um, from using a, a shinai uh, that's a, appropriately sized to them. Um, I practice with a lot of women that are taller than I am. Um, and, and they're using 38s, and I, I don't get that. <laughs> I certainly don't get that at all. Uh, but, you know, um, it, I don't think it's really relevant to your height either because that, that's not how Kendall works. Kendall's not like EI or something like that where you use a, a shinai that's relative to your, your height. Um, you, you use one that's set by regulation. So, um, likewise, I don't know any men that use a 38 men's shinai that's weighted over five, you know, you could, if you wanted, you could get shinai that were um, over 520, 510 grams and only 38 in length or even 30, 37 in length. They'd be really thick and they'd be really cumbersome, I think. Um, but you could, you could certainly do that, but I, I don't know anybody that would want to do that. Um, I can't think of any reason why someone would want to do that. So I don't see why women are doing that too. <laughs> right? I don't see why women are doing that. They're, they're sort of choosing. And I, well, I know why. It's because there's sort of patterns have emerged. Um, it's sort of been ingrained in sort of kendo, particularly outside of Japan. And it's kind of just, oh, well, a woman use a 38 and a man use a 39. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd really like it if we got away from that. It's, it's one of those sort of old um, ingrained thing about, about kendo equipment that like needs to die. It's like the stitch width argument on the burger. <clears throat> Excuse me, like the, like the tighter stitching is better um, sort of thing that, that's still knocking around that really needed to die about 15 years ago um, because, you know, that stitch width doesn't really have a bearing on the quality of a bog set. Um, so yeah. Uh, what do you think though? Do you think I'm talk talking total rubbish? Maybe I am. Um, I, I, I don't have the experience that the people I'm talking about uh, do. So um, let me know in the comments. That's what they're there for. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think uh, about uh, what I just said about Lady Shinai. Also, you can leave me a question for the next video or you can post it in the Kendo Show Early Access group. Uh, there's a link in the description, as I said before. I think you know all that now. Unless this is your first time watching the video, I say this sort of same stuff every single time. Um, comment down below, link, just, you know, all that sort of thing. So you know what to do. <laughs> uh, and most importantly, and I think you know what's coming. You got, you want to go and shop at kendostar.com because that's the website that I run. It's all pretty, um, amazing gear to be honest. Uh, <laughs> obviously I'd say that, but it is, it is. Uh, we've got a really great reputation and it's really easy to say why, uh, see why. Um, it's, it's, it's gear that I've either designed or selected, particularly for the international market. Um, and uh, we've got some new products out uh, just for um, the new year. So yeah, check them out too. The new Gaia uniform is awesome. Uh, I think I talked about that in the last video. I've already introduced them anyway. Get to kendallstar.com, check it out. Uh, and other than that, I think that's it. See you next time.